like I said, it's just a small town trying to get back into the 21st century. And big, big city stuff, I, I really don't know. You know, I don't keep track of it that much. should uh, prioritize taxes to what we really need. And if we need police and fire over a baseball field or an art project, I think we should definitely go with the police and the fire department. I don't agree with light rail. I don't like it. When I lived in Bellevue, Washington, there was a big process of bringing light rail across the 520 bridge and the tolls, and um, they spent millions of dollars to study it. And then it's another millions of dollars to put it in place. And from what I've seen of the ridership on the Sounder train, and this is, again, Seattle area, and maybe Portland, uh, I don't, unless there's something extremely different going on, like going to a uh, NBA basketball game or a football game or what have you, uh, they're not really used to their capacity. I, um, I, I don't believe in million dollar studies to find out something that all these other towns, San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, LA, have already dumped tons of money into. I know they're two different geographic areas, or three or four, but look at something someone has, like the BART system in San Francisco, <clears throat> that is totally successful. And Granted, it can't be identical, but it could be patterned after that, after that, and the studies have already been made. I think that if you're going to spend that much money and have that little come back, um, <laughs> there's no reason to even consider it. It's, it's absolutely, what was the word, ludicrous <laughs> to spend that much money and not reap any benefits of it, even after 10 years or what have you. I think uh, they'd be better off doing I don't know, changing routes, making sure that uh, uh, the routes that are on there are the ones that pick up the majority of the people who are using it. It's sort of like, I'll use Yakult because Yakult is where I'm used to. The buses would used to come out of Battleground, and now the buses are parked at Yakult School, and they go out and they service the area. They bring the kids to school, and they've changed routes and modernized it, <clears throat> and uh, it seems to work a lot better, and the drivers themselves are not taxed having to drive all the way into ba Battleground, all the way back out, and the kids love it. Some kids would have to get up, what was that like? They'd have to be on the bus like 4.30 or 5 o'clock to get to high school and battleground because the bus had to come all the way out, drive all the way around, drive all the way back. If the buses were there, they could have picked them up a half hour, 45 minutes later, and let them have a little more sleep before they had to, to go into town. 
And as far as CTRAN, they have a bus that comes to Yakult at 6 a.m. and is back at 6 p.m. with very little ridership. Because you got to have more than one bus a day. One bus a day at 6 to 6, um, it's just kind of hard to do. I don't support anything that has not been approved by what I call we the people. We are the people who elect these people and we are the ones who should approve or disapprove their actions. So one of the reasons why I want to get on the Yakult Town Council, there's so many people who read something into something and do it their way. It's the people who elected them they should be given the opportunity. That's it. We the people elect these people and we should be able to say yes or no, period. I would support it. Um, but I would, I would need to know w what it's going to do. Is that just going to help the eastbound, westbound traffic in Oregon on 84? Years ago, there was talk and studies done of a bridge going across between Woodland and Ridgefield, tying into the Oregon side, going over Cornelius Pass and, dry, and tying into 217, making it a large arterial cutoff. So a lot of trucks that didn't need to come through Portland, either 205 or I-5, could bypass that. A lot of people who didn't necessarily want to go through downtown Portland would, would uh, eliminate all that extra traffic going through that was just transient. They're just going through. So <clears throat> I'd have to, in order to say yes, I would support it wholeheartedly, I'd have to see, you know, what it's going to do. If, if trucks have to go through Portland to go out 84 and it's built in such a way that it could go across the river and take eastbound truck traffic out of the core area of any town, Vancouver or Portland, I think that would be a good thing. But I don't know enough about it to, to absolutely say yes, I would support it. If it did do relieved traffic, yes, we need, we need um, businesses. Um, and on a truck route, if that was used you know, to supply uh, better access for trucks, then there would be companies who could come in and know that there was shipping right close to their door instead of having to have someone from wherever to come out and pick up their product and ship it eastward, east, eastbound. I'm not <clears throat> into finances other than I know what my finances are and how I handle them. Um, in most areas that I've worked at, and I've worked for the Housing Authority of Portland years ago in maintenance, there's a lot of waste. There is a lot of waste, and there is a lot of, well, my brother-in-law has this company and he can do this for you, 
if you'll do this for me. I'm not saying that's what it is in Vancouver, but I know it does happen. I think that, <clears throat> I don't know when Vancouver or Portland or any town gets audited, and I don't know who audits them, but there has to be a way to cut costs. I've been in different businesses, companies that I work for, they were starting to see a decline in revenue and they did cost studies and they found ways to cut costs. In one particular job I had, we would either use grade eight bolts or grade four bolts, whatever size they were. Well, some equipment needed a grade eight, a stronger bolt. And during in one of the studies, which I was with, our recommendation was don't buy any grade four or grade five, buy only grade eight. It cost, they, they cost a nickel more, 10 cents more a piece. But in the long run, when something would break and the bolt had to be replaced, it was usually a, a, an inferior grade. So when we started manufacturing with the grade eight bolts and nuts and so on and so forth, it cut a million dollars a year out. So, and that had to do with, you know, warranty work also, because you had to send it to them for free, ship it to them for free, or send someone out there for free to fix it for free. And that is a cost for free is not for free. The for free is what the company uh, takes back. And after the for free gets so much, they will add, like any company, they will not take a loss. Their product is selling at $2 a piece and they have a problem with it and they have a, uh, they have a warranty work that really exceeds what it should be, they just raise the price of the product instead of making the product stand up and go uh, and, and do what it's supposed to do. Give it a good lifespan, not, oh my God, you know, you got a 30 day warranty on the 31st day, the thing breaks. I'm just a mere mortal man and I listen to things, what people say and what people tell me and what people ask me. And I have, um, I don't know what you want to call it. It's just, I listen to these people and then I see someone else who's in authority doing something totally different. And I look up little regulations and amendments and in, in the law, and the law clearly says you can't do that, but they've gone ahead and done it. There needs to be people, and some of the people running besides myself, are in that same thought process, I guess you could say. They understand that the people aren't being listened to, the people are being walked on, so to speak, <clears throat> and they just do what they want to do. And that's unfair to the people. Like I said earlier, we the people elected you. So you need to listen to us from the President of the United States all the way down to the poor, lonely dog catcher. If you're an elected official or appointed by an elected official, you need to answer to we the people. Thank you. <laughs>